The film school question is a tough one. It's complicated, with lots of variables, and completely subjective. Spoiler alert, there is no one-size-fits-all answer. But here are some reasons why you should and shouldn't go to film school. Should I stay or should I go now? To get free weekly filmmaking content, subscribe and click the bell. Now, let the debate begin. I'm not gonna debate you, Jerry. Okay. Med school for doctors. Required. Who would like to reconstruct the organs? Law school for lawyers. Required. Law school? You're a lawyer? Film school for filmmakers? Optional. Why did you decide to skip film school? Don't you think you're a little young? Shut the f up! Next question! Everyone has their own opinion on the pros and cons of going to film school, and you should listen to all of them. If you're stuck in the middle of this decision, the best thing to do is research all your options and decide what makes the most sense for you. Let's run through some of the good, bad, and ugly things to consider, starting with one of the biggest. Your money flows freely here now. Well, I do, I do love that money, sir. <laughs> Film school is expensive. This is a very common statement, but it's not entirely true. The biggest and best film schools do have high tuition. A four-year education at universities like USC and NYU, tuition alone might cost $300,000. So unless you're really well off financially, you're going to graduate with serious student debt. We're broke. For most people, this takes years or even decades to pay off. How can I relax when I messed up so bad? On the other hand, a state school like UCLA is a little more than half of that for California residents, and Cal State Northridge is about half of that. To be fair, not all schools are the same. A higher tuition school might offer benefits that lower tuition schools can't. The point is that cost doesn't have to be a deal breaker if your dream is to go to film school. Oh, when I was a kid, that was my dream job. Of course, you can avoid tuition altogether by skipping film school. Many arguments have been made to simply take the money you would have spent on film school and use it to make your own films. Paul Thomas Anderson went to film school for two days and quit. He got his tuition back and used it to help fund a short film. More coffee? No, nope, no thanks. Anderson doesn't mince words when discussing film school. And action! It seems to me to be a waste of time and a waste of money. My film education really came from watching other movies. Okay, you gotta have that makeup lady fix your hair, okay? Uh, okay. Okay, it's really wet. Kevin Smith sold off some of his comic book collection and maxed out credit cards to pay for clerks. I'm not even supposed to be here today! Oh, you. But say you do cough up the money for film school. Let's look at the education and resources you can expect. What do you actually learn in film school? Since film is both a creative and technical medium, a thorough film school education should include both the how and the why. When people think of film school, they generally think of it in terms of learning how to make movies, like how to operate the camera and how to light a scene. There's also a second, but no less important, education that focuses on why. Studying the art form itself can yield a greater appreciation for it, but it can also inform and inspire your own artistic expression. Barry Jenkins describes his experience in film school. It was very learned by doing, and over the course of that first semester, I learned I knew nothing about making films, like the, the actual craft, you know, mm -hmm. the, the technical tools. So I took a year off, and I started watching foreign films. What I realized was everybody in film school was mimicking what they were watching. Some film programs are split between film production and film studies tracks. Film studies is typically for future academics hoping to teach film. But some filmmakers, like Catherine Bigelow, choose the route through film school. Learning the history of film, the technological innovations, how a script is written, the various film movements, and the theory underneath it all, this will help make you into a more thoughtful and well-rounded filmmaker. 
Again, this kind of education can be found on your own, but it does require you to be your own teacher. Self-taught, no lessons. Thank you very much, Pop. Watch films, listen to commentaries, study the making of featurettes, read books, attend film festivals, and panel discussions. Upon graduation, you'll have a degree, which certainly has value. Not only is it a formal recognition of your accomplishments, it looks good on a resume. Impressive. Very nice. The thing is that getting jobs in the film industry isn't usually dependent on your educational background. Your work is your resume, and your reel is typically what lands you gigs. Even NYU Film School alum and Professor Spike Lee acknowledges that fact. A lot of people come out of NYU thinking that because you have this degree from this prestigious institution, NYU, in the real world, they don't really give a shit. Now, let's talk about resources. Film school puts the tools of filmmaking into your hands and shows you how to use them. Cameras, lenses, lights, everything. Different schools have more extensive resources than others, which is usually related to the various tuition levels. Can you buy or rent this equipment on your own? Of course. Can you find online resources to help you learn how to use it? Yes, of course. When we talk about filmmakers in the past going to film school, we have to consider the context. In the 60s, it was much more difficult to make a film. Today, you have an entire film studio in your pocket. You can write, shoot, edit, and publish a film right now. What are you waiting for, Lara? The democratization of filmmaking is a double-edged sword. Now that anyone can make a film, many people are doing just that making it harder and harder to stand out and get noticed. I'm special and unique. Whether you go to film school or not, there's one quality that all future filmmakers require, motivation. If you need a regimented schedule with deadlines and structure, film school will give you that. If you're completely self-motivated and have no issue getting out there and doing it, you might not need such a formal environment. Christopher Nolan is an example of this mindset. When I was, I think, seven years old, making films using my dad's Super 8 camera and little action figures, doing stop motion films, a little bit of animation, and, and a certain amount of live action. And I just carried on making films as I grew up. There never really was a period in my life where I completely stopped doing it. The biggest argument for film school, however, comes in the form of experience and connections. Succeeding in the film industry requires talent, yes, but just as important, it also requires networking. Film school provides a community around you that has many benefits. For one, you're working with peers who are just as passionate about the work as you are. This also means you have hands-on experience with a key aspect of filmmaking, collaboration. You're also working with instructors and professors who provide a level of mentorship you might not have otherwise. For example, Spike Lee teaches courses at NYU, and Wes Anderson's DP, Robert Yeoman, is on the faculty at USC. On the other hand, you might already have a network of collaborators and mentors outside of school, or you can create one. Start a film club or form your own production company that collectively works on different projects. Make commercials for local businesses, shoot weddings, start a vlog, there were a bunch of these releases that were basically just cropped to fit the format. Many filmmakers today met their closest collaborators in school. Before Saul and Insidious, writer Lee Wannell and director James Wan were classmates at the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. David Lynch met sound designer Alan Splett and cinematographer Frederick Elms at AFI. Just as Ari Aster met cinematographer Pavel Pogorzelski. I loved being here at AFI, but that like it was worth it just to have met Pavel and, and to have sparked that friendship. Many film schools also have career offices that specialize in getting your foot in the door with internships and job fairs. Of course, a network doesn't form magically if you attend film school. In school or outside of it, you're going to have to work to form lasting bonds. Did we just become best friends? Yep. 
Perhaps the toughest realization about the film school debate is that there is no guarantee of a successful career. If we look at the most successful directors, can you tell who went to film school and who didn't? Is there anything about their work that signals a formal film education? How about now? The point is that film school is not a requirement to make films. There's one question that you should answer before deciding on film school or deciding to be a filmmaker in the first place. Do you want to be a filmmaker? Or do you want to be rich and famous? Because for the vast majority of people, the second part never happens. Statistically, your chances of winning an Oscar or directing a smash blockbuster movie are slim to none. The filmmakers we all know and those you aspire to be are an extreme minority. 99% of filmmakers never break through that level. But as M. Night Shyamalan puts it, this shouldn't be a deal breaker. Like imagine you've lost your the person that you love. You your parents think you're you're you know a failure. Your everything has gone wrong. Everything. Do you still want to be a, a? And it takes 20 years, 30 years, and everybody says you stink. You stink. You're terrible. You spent all that time, all regret. Your whole life is defined by your failure to do this. Is it still something you want to do? Then go do it because it should be no other choice in the matter. If you love the work, thrive on collaboration and have a deep need to express yourself through film. A career is waiting for you. <laughs> the path to get there is different for everyone, but there is a path for you. You just have to start walking. Did you go to film school? Who wants to know? Why or why not? I'll tell you why, because you ain't a man yet. Share your story in the comments. Oh, oh, so now you want to share. I can't share what isn't mine. Should I stay or should I go now? For all your projects going forward, let Studio Binder's production management software do the heavy lifting. Write your script, break it down, make a shot list, lay out your storyboards, schedule your shoot, and more. To stay up to date on all your film education, subscribe to the channel and head on over to the Studio Binder blog for articles on every aspect of the filmmaking process. That's all for now. Good luck on your journey and May the path you choose be the right one.